Meeting to order. We had a resolution to approve the minutes of the prior meeting. Resolution by Dan, seconded by Fred. Any changes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right, first thing, uh, this, this meeting today is going to be a little bit different than we've had in the past. That's why I put the stuff up here. So we're, we're, it's still going to be a work session, but we're going to do it in open session. Um, probably people, if they were watching it on YouTube, would get a little bored, but uh, so be it. At least we're, <laughs> we're open. Uh, we'll start off, uh, ask Paul and, and uh, Gretchen if either one of you have any comments to start. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, um, as uh, you know, this is uh, the purpose of this committee is to establish an evaluation form for the county administrator and eventually have uh, forms uh, that we can utilize all the way through our staff. Uh, certainly as the county administrator, I welcome this and support this. Uh, we have also uh, been reviewing uh, uh, my uh, work performance and goal expectation for this future year, and I believe that uh, they have the goals have now been shared with the uh, supervisors, at least that's my understanding. As a result of that, I also shared the goals with Gretchen before she came here for this meeting today. Uh, and I felt it was important to do so because we were trying to um, develop some forms for the use of the committee in terms of the evaluations and the goals, of course, directly relate to the, the, those forms. In addition to that, I have also uh, shared with Gretchen other forms that I was able to find that are used for other county administrators, uh, and I gave those to her as well uh, in an effort to try to um, uh, you know, just speed up the process and uh, maybe uh, get some forms that would be uh, user-friendly, so to speak. Gretchen, we're fortunate. Obviously, uh, everybody here knows her history as a, as a prior life as a consultant in uh, HR type of functions, and so she does have, I feel, the background uh, that will definitely be uh, useful to us as we walk through this process. So I respect her abilities in this regard, and Mr. Chairman, I think that she's prepared to walk you through um, a number of things uh, regarding this process. Okay. All right. Thanks, Paul. <coughs> Question? Uh, I actually have some handout material, but I probably don't have enough time to do it. Is there a way to get this information emailed out to all the supervisors? Because I think that was something we were going to try to do with our committee meetings, just to get you know the backup ahead of time and be able to send. Because this would have been good to have. Yeah, I was going to do that yesterday, and to be honest with you, I I didn't have everybody's email, and I just uh, at this point. And frankly, as far as the materials go, there's no way that I could have gotten them out in advance. I apologize. Yeah, it's just hard to. I finished we'll them. I finished them ten minutes ago. So well, would I, you I, mind sending them out to the whole board after the meeting? Not at all. Thanks. I, I put together my notes and gave you copies of all of those so that you would be able to ref have reference to them as, you, as we move forward. I think for the purposes of the committee, uh, we had some things that uh, Paul and I were charged with. We met and we our, our tasks, I believe, are, are laid out there in five elements. We were supposed to look at the performance elements, then we were supposed to incorporate those elements into <coughs> our objectives, and then Paul and I were supposed to reword some of the elements, and then my charge was to evaluate the forms and discuss with the committee, and then part of the goal of this process to have the same or consistent forms for all evaluations. Based on that information, I wanted to provide the group with some background on performance management um, and, and the context of performance management within strategic planning. Um, strategic planning, uh, is, a, is a finite process and, and it lays out for you and Chairman Garrity talked about this in the organizational meeting and how important it is. When you get to performance evaluation, performance evaluation is really the end of a process, it's not the beginning of a process. And in for-profit organizations, we want to evaluate everybody's performance every year because we want to set expectations at the beginning of every performance period and then we want to evaluate people's performance uh, an incremental basis, and so, some organizations do it every month, some organizations do it every quarter, some organizations just do it once a year. But a good performance management 
management system actually communicate those expectations and performance, and, and the performance manager has regular and ongoing conversations with their, their people throughout the course of the year, so that when you finally get to the performance evaluation, where you actually deliver a piece of paper to the employee, that should really be a summary of all the conversations that you've had during the performance period. And if your performance evaluation discussion is scheduled for one hour, as an example, 15 minutes of it should be just reviewing the document, talking about all the things that have been accomplished over the year. But 45 minutes of that discussion should really be on what we're going to accomplish in the next performance period. That's an idea of performance evaluation. But again, we don't get to that until the end of a strategic planning process. And this, my little diagram here is really to identify that strategic planning is really <coughs> a formal process. And it usually starts with a board of directors, in our situation, a board of supervisors. Those folks get together and talk about the broad, general direction that they want to take the organization. And it starts with a vision. And a vision is a, a mental picture of where you want to take the organization. Yes, organizations do commit that into words, but it really starts with where you want to be. If I took you through a strategic planning exercise, you'd probably have you shake, shut your eyes for a minute, and I'd talk about some desired future time, and I'd ask you what you've seen, and then we would process that information to come up with a vision or a mental picture of where we want to be somewhere in the future. Based on where we want to be, then we start to define the words, and it's usually a paragraph for a lot of organizations of exactly what our mission is, what is our purpose. Certainly as a county government, we have a mission of service. All 33 departments that we have here, each one of them has a a definitive job to do within the greater context of the organization. So we identify what we're all here for, what we're trying to accomplish. And regardless of the vision that the Board of Supervisors comes up with, the mission is going to be part of a, of a service orientation, has to be, because we're government entity. Based on these first two steps, then we get into the tactical planning process. Tactical plans are usually things that Years ago, organizations used to do that, and they were three to five year plans. A lot of organizations don't do five year plans anymore because by the time you get to a five year plan, everything's changed. And so today, usually these tactical plans are two or three years out. And with the election cycles we have here, usually, you know, I would think that a two year would be reasonable if we did this at the end of a period, uh, at the end of an election period. So tactical plans, we put those in place based on what we decide what our greater plans are or goals and objectives find those. Then we start to get into the operational plans. Exactly how are we going to make these things happen? First, so we start again with the big picture. We start to define that even more, more uh, specifically. Then our tactical plans define things more specifically. Then we get down to our operational plans. Here at the county, we have 33 departments. And so based on the big tactical plans or the big things we're trying to accomplish, then we should be looking at operational plans that we put in place within the 33 departments that help us meet our greater goal that we defined in our first three processes. Then once we get down to the individual, uh, the, you know, the operational plans that we put in place for the departments, that's when we should be getting down to individual performance expectations. So within the department, I mean, I have a small department. There's four people in my department. And so for me, individual performance expectations would probably not be as difficult for me to define as it would be for somebody, for example, in public health or DSS. And so in that process, it would have to be distilled even further um, so that maybe in, in the DSS situation, for example, the individual performance expectations would start with Maureen and then they would go down through the chain of command until we actually get to individual performance expectations. And the really important part of this individual performance expectations, and this is what we're going to evaluate somewhere down the road, is that once we do that for employees, and why this process is so important, is that when every employee comes to work every day, then they know exactly what's expected of them. And if we choose not to define that, then employees come in and make it up as they go. So if we look at the performance management process, or the performance evaluation process, it really starts long before we get down to defining individual performance expectations. So that all of this planning that's done is really just a distillation process when we finally get down to exactly what are we going to do every day when we come in. And then as managers or leaders of the organization, like the department heads, which you know, is part of the charge of this committee, we put together a device for those folks to be evaluated. So this distillation process has to identify what the Board of Supervisors want those department heads to be doing on a quarterly or annual basis. Does this 
make sense, or do you have any questions? I have Very a question. Short course. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but my question is, I think what you're telling us is that we approach this thing backwards. Yes, we are. And that we really should be doing this now, the strategic uh, planning process. That 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 is normally the way it is done in an organization. All right. And and that planning process is the same for everyone that works at Warren County that would get uh, a review. Okay. It, started, it should be part of the bigger picture. So all the departments, what the department's doing, or what the departments are doing from day to day should really be driven by the larger plans of Warren County. Now this is a huge process. We have almost a thousand employees and we have a lot of jurisdictions that we serve here. And so I'm not, and I don't, and I, and I don't want to give anyone the impression that this is an easy process. I've distilled it down in some incremental steps, but this is not an easy process. And as you know, being part of government, we have to get consensus. And so getting consensus on, you know, who we are and where we're going and what kind of plans we're going to put in place is not a quick process or an easy process. I guess I'm concerned that, go ahead. Okay. I just say, but haven't we already established the vision, Paul? Um, no, and I, I think that's one of the things. That was one of our part of what we wanted to do. With well, I think there's a couple things. First of all, I think that this county really hasn't gone through the type of process that I think Gretchen envisions and certainly I envision. But I will say this, that maybe two, just so that we don't lose this, Mr. Chairman, that is that while we're advocating that and while that's a lengthy process to get through, uh, you'll find, and just maybe just stealing a little bit of Gretchen's thunder for later, you'll find, though, that we're also prepared to present today a way to jumpstart the process to get you where you want, at least for this year, to get us where we want to go. And that goes back to the goals that I've already drafted that have been shared with the, with the supervisors. So to some extent, we're kind of shortcutting what is a very important process, but at least we're able to get you into where you want it to be, which was looking at the performance goals and, and things for at least this year and getting us started on that path. And at the same time, we would envision, as suggested by your uh, address to the board a couple of days ago, Mr. Chairman, that uh, we would also engage in the strategic planning. So we're kind of going to go two tracks here at once. One, to be responsive to what this committee requested, but also the other would be to ultimately engage in this more elaborate strategic planning process because that is really going to be important for the county as we go forward into the future so that we make sure we end up where we all want to end up. I guess what I was saying is our vision and mission, you know, I, I think we talk about it a lot, but we've never put it in writing. Correct. I mean, we talked about what we want to accomplish as county government and because, you know, when you come from the outside in, you know, we're not making widgets. We're providing services. So we got to identify how we want to deliver the services to our constituents. And I've heard you say that a hundred times. Mm -hmm. So I think well, I would think that the vision and the mission we probably have discussed a lot of times. You just got to get it down and right. I, I, I well, I think what has happened is is that, uh, and you said this here again, right in your own address, is that the vision and mission, if you will, four or five years ago was very easy. Well, because we were financially struggling, and the vision and mission at that point was simply to get the county back on financial stability or financial stable grounds. Yeah. Right. Now we're into a new era, and I think, and, you know, just like anything, you can re redo all of this stuff and re-establish uh, where we're going. And I think, just so you know, as I think while I agree with you that we do have some visions and some missions that are floating around, and certainly we've done this with department heads and, and things, but the vision I think that we're really looking at here in the strategic planning process is a vision that is huge in terms of, it starts with Warren County as a whole, and where do we want to see the county? I'm talking about the physical county out there. Where do we want to see that county in five years? What, what type of businesses are we, do we want to see here? What type of development do we want to see? What, what do we think the jobs are that the folks want? What should the tax policies be to encourage that? What type of money should we be putting into economic development to encourage that future Warren County that we want? Should we be putting more money into parks? Where should we be allocating our budget resources? Are roads the correct thing to do? Is that the most important allocation? So that vision, that if you will, that, we're, that you need to really work on, and it's going to take a long time for that, 
this coming year will be to look at Warren County and what is the ideal Warren County that we want to see? What do we think works for our residents? Is jobs most important? Is tourism more important? Where, you know, where do we want to put our emphasis? And, we've, and as you say, Mr. Chairman, we have talked about that a lot already. We've got economic development going. We know that uh, the APA issues and uh, uh, everything from invasive species, we know that our tourism market is important, but we've never really pulled everybody together and established a very, very concrete, comprehensive plan, you will. Much like, think of it like a comprehensive zoning plan, which I know a lot of folks are familiar with, with their individual towns. We don't have that comprehensive plan for Warren County yet, and that's what we would hope to establish. And that's, that's huge stuff. That's going to take a lot of time, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I hope we don't get too waylaid in this area because I think that we are able to accomplish what the committee wanted to accomplish short term with the goals that were sent out previously, and we can get into the evaluations and start some of this, jump start some of these other things. Just know that we'll want to circle back, though, eventually and capture this overall strategic planning. Easier to make a profit <laughs> <laughs> than to deliver. Well, would you? Brad, you had a question? Well, what I was going to say is, you know, I think the chairman in the State of the County address really set out a, a his vision, which mm -hmm. he took from the full board, and yes, right. it can be more detailed, but at least we do have a, a vision from the chairman. <coughs> and, uh, it, you know, on Adirondack issues, we've got, I've been involved in going through this process with this Adirondack Futures where they, they do in-state planning, which it sounds like what this really is. is you, you look at what do you want, where do you want to be, they're talking about 25 years from now, but it could be five years from now and then what things have to happen now or during the next five years or not happen for you to get there. Right, yeah. right. Okay. I'm glad you, you made the comment because uh, was, that was going to be my next question. The, the chairman has given us the charge to have the measurable goals for, for the administrator by the end of February, and uh, that's, it's, it's good to know that we can be working in that direction and right. still have in mind that we'll get back to the planning process. Any I'm other? To, to share this process with you to put some of your discussions in context. Yeah. Like, because performance evaluation has to really be put into a bigger context. And it is about channeling energy, organizational energy. Every organization is just a collection of people. And so you have to channel their energy in the appropriate direction and hopefully in one direction so that you can accomplish what you set out to. So the strategic planning process is an important process. And it fits within the performance management process. We have a churn here in the organization. We've got people who are coming and going all the time. And so when we identify what we're looking for, we put ads up, we do postings, we have to they have to make our job descriptions. So we identify each one of the positions we have within our department and what we want those folks to do. Those tasks are often brought in general. The performance expert the performance evaluation allows us to actually even more finitely identify what we're looking for from someone during a performance period because what we want this quarter is very different than what we may want in a whole year's cycle. So when we get people into the organization, we recruit them based on setting expectations. We start really communicating expectations of performance that funnel down to the performance evaluation from the first point of contact, an ad in the paper or a posting. Then once we go through the recruiting process, we select that person based on their qualifications to make sure that they're able to do the job that we've defined. Once we get through that stage, then we get them in the organization and we orient them. We provide them with tools and technology and those kinds of things so that they can be able to deliver on the performance that we expect. So once we get through these first two phases and we get someone up to speed, then we get into a situation where we start to delegate work to them so that they can grow and become an integral part of the operation. And then the other part of that is to <coughs> coach folks to higher levels of performance. Coaching and orientation are related. We are doing some coaching during the orientation process. But part of performance management and being a leader or a manager in any organization is making sure that your people grow all the time. As managers, we can never provide job security for anybody, but we can provide employment security. And we do that by making sure that people are always more valuable to the organization. They have more skills. They <coughs> require more tasks, and every time they do a task, they get smarter, and so they have more institutional knowledge. In, a, in uh, succession planning conversations we've had at the personnel committee, 
we've talked about the need to replace people that are leaving the organization and taking their institutional knowledge with them. If we are not managing performance sufficiently in this process, our people will never be ready to step up to those positions that are being, uh, that are the positions of those people who are leaving the organization because they're retiring or something else. So it's important that we're spending time here. The performance evaluation is really pivotal in making sure that we're delegating work and coaching to higher levels of performance. So this performance evaluation and feedback the process, as you can see, it's really the fourth, fourth phase of the performance management process, and that's where we're giving people feedback on their performance. But again, the feedback is based on the expectations that we've already set, and we did that before we even hired the person. And every year that somebody's with the organization, they should be increasing their skills more and more and more. The last part of the performance management process is the reward system. We give ratings, bonuses, we give opportunities, we, don't give, we, have, other, we have other opportunities to give people things. Um, bonus, for example, um, with, in our world here would be different kinds of assignments or special projects, something that somebody that can do that may be outside of their scope of work, but we'll provide them with the opportunity for promotability or for some kind of self-actualization. So performance management, that's a performance management system. I felt that I needed to share the strategic management process with you and also the performance management process so that you can understand the context in which a performance evaluation document fits within the greater planning process of the organization. Do you have any questions on that part before I, I continue with some of the other work? No, I don't have any, well, no, I don't have any questions on that part. I don't want to, you're on a roll now, and I don't want to quit your momentum here. But uh, on the first sheet, on the, yeah, I can't say it, strategic planning, uh, does everyone on the committee and all of the supervisors here agree that that's, that's very important? Okay. Well, I agree it's important. I, I, I am a little confused because I know the charge of this committee was specifically to look at the county administrator's goals. And so we've had three or four meetings during a very busy holiday season and spent a whole lot of time collaborating together to come up with what we thought were decent performance elements based on not only, say, the Department of Justice, other counties, um, other examples throughout the country. And I, I, you know, the email you printed out here isn't the email that I sent over to Paul and to Gretchen, but I, I thought the purpose of that was to look at those performance elements and modify them because as a board we had agreed on those. What I'm seeing here today, and again for the first time, is some feedback that they're not viable performance elements, that we need to go back to basics, do the strategic planning, and then also, I, I'm a little lost. Yeah, I don't think that's the case, just so you know. I think that um, all Gretchen wanted to do, and I thought it was a really good idea, was to put this whole performance uh, measurement, uh, individual performance evaluations in context. So that's all she's done for you. We haven't changed the mission of the committee, as I mentioned earlier. We just haven't gotten there yet. But I think the next few steps here will show you that we're fully responsive to what it is you wanted. And I think when we, let, we end up here today, you can walk out of here with a, uh, an evaluation form that you want. That includes the measurable goals that we had yes. identified? And that's not in front of me right now then? Um, I don't know. I'll let Gretchen continue because I think she'll get there. Jim? Yeah, um, so, I mean, I, I've seen this before so I understand it already. Um, but the thing that I've always found the most enthusiastic people are people that have been involved You want to see people, a lot of people that have come here aren't people who are profit oriented or driven by money. I mean, some of the most dedicated people I've ever seen are firemen, police, I would, I would imagine emergency people. You know, a lot of people come into this business or into service businesses that they want to do something of public service. And I think you would end up losing something if they aren't involved. I think we need to get their involvement as well as asking the supervisors what they want. And uh, I think we need to uh, find a way to make that work. Because I think you would find that they would be more accepting of it than if you just ever come from the top down. That's a 
and usually it's an organizational decision how many folks want to be involved in the process. Um, my experience has been usually when the department heads are gathering information from their people and bringing that up you know, through the chain of command, usually everyone's voices feel like they're heard. So it doesn't have to be as cumbersome as, ha as having everybody in the room, but as long as the distillation process works from, you know, for example, the rank and file, sending that information up to the organization, then it works very well. Okay, any other? Questions or comments? Uh, move on now. Right. Uh, the, the other input that I wanted to give uh, was that usually in organizations, the executive's evaluation is very different than everybody else's evaluation in the organization. Uh, and, you know, that said, Part of it is because of the complexity of their job responsibilities and the higher level responsibilities that they have. It's very hard to quantify those sometimes. They're, they're less tangible than others. So the, you can take a couple of different approaches to an evaluation, complexity or simplicity. Um, there's been a tremendous amount written on the, simpli on the simplistic evaluation being more effective. In the case of an executive, um, a narrative is usually more effective than something where you just try to fit them into the checkbox system. Or, you know, I have, I've directed one of those for the greater population here. That would not fit for an executive um, just because of the nature of the goals and objectives. Um, and so the <coughs> in other organizations, for profits, not for profits, Usually, an executive is evaluated by the board, but usually it's the executive committee of the board. And so I, I laid this out for you, that if you were to follow that pattern, which is a normal pattern, then the administrator in this situation would be evaluated by an executive committee of the board of supervisors. And that should be the chairman of the board. The budget officer is responsible for fiscal controls within the organization personnel committee chairperson and then the uh, chairperson of the committee to which the administrator uh, I, I, reports to. I, I, think I agree with you. I think that the executives should be rated a little bit differently than everybody else. However, when the whole evaluation is done, you almost have to put a check in a, in a box so that he you, you can tell by by measuring people on a scale, and let's say it's one to five. Some at some point you've got to take the narrative and you've got to rate it. And how do you suggest we do that? Well, we've got the, we've got a couple of forms, and so we'll go to the forms last. And and actually, Paul had recommended some forms. I reviewed the forms that the committee had provided, and um, I gave you uh, you know I had identified my recommendations based on the forms they provide based on the forms that are provided. I, uh, there are organizations can use rating systems. The more rating, you know, if you, if you, you can go three, you can go five, you can go 10, um, but we can talk about rating systems when we get to the form part, if you don't mind. Okay, all right. Um, Self-evaluation, uh, I mentioned that they're integral to the performance evaluation process, and the reason for that is if you look at our situation here, when it comes to the administrator's performance expectations, there will be no person better to track his accomplishments than Paul. The rest of the organization will probably not be keeping a file with um, performance documentation on Paul's deliverables based on every one of those 12 goals that were defined. And so a, per a performance evaluation of the self is critical. And I have a form. Um, <coughs> recommended form for doing that. I think that based on reviewing the administrator's goals, which is one of my uh, tasks, I think that 12 goals are aggressive for most folks. You know, we look at organizations, we want five or six key goals, areas that we want folks to concentrate on. You know, based on my experience, I might suggest that they be two-year goals versus one-year goals. Uh, but the other part of that is that those goals will also require some more work at this point. And I, I identified the SMART goals, but 
in any kind of planning process, you know, we've got the broad general goals at this point, but now the next step is, would be for Paul to go back and look at those goals that have been defined and then put due dates, because they have to be, they're, they're fairly broad. So now they have to be more specific, and then once they're more specific, they have to have times and due dates on them. They need to be reasonable. So the achievable part of the, the SMART goal formula is that can he do all that in a year? Based on my experience and, the, and 12 goals at, at his stratification in the organization, it is extremely aggressive. So, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm recommending that they be two year goals, not one year goals. Um, and then are they reachable? So, achievable and reachable, um, can he achieve those? And timely, they also have to be. If we've gone through a strategic planning process, you know when you want things done. And so there have to be there has to be a relationship between the timely delivery on those goals and what the strategic plan calls for. Okay. Uh, as far as the forms go, I've I've put together some forms, it's kind of eight and eleven are kind of linked there. And um, I had looked at Paul's goals, the 12 goals. I looked at the performance elements that were submitted. And as I'm starting to go through the performance about, uh, elements, uh, there were five of them, I tried to put them in categories because I believe that when it comes to performance, you have to put things in the categories because you have to evaluate things in broad general terms. So when I looked at the element one, I thought it fell into planning. But the difficulty is I didn't think that I thought that that element fell into leadership and supervision, but I wasn't sure how you'd be able to measure that in finite terms. Uh, performance element three fell into the category of compliance. That was a bit more easy to, uh, to measure. Uh, performance element four, I wasn't sure that it, this is communicate the results of the outcome of our survey form and the report of the submission. I wasn't sure how you could measure that. I thought I put it into a communication goal category. But I, you know, I, I wasn't sure how you could measure that without more uh, definitive explanation. Performance element five, uh, I, I put that into the category of initiative. Uh, I talked about Richard Belsarder's demonstration of activity, but I'm not really sure how you measure that unless you have more finite uh, definitions of what you're trying to measure. It's important in performance evaluation that folks know what they have to do and what they have to accomplish. That's why the measurable piece is an important part of performance evaluation. Um, so I, there were five performance elements for 12 goals, and they weren't defined sufficiently so that, we, that I could put Paul's goals into those categories. And again, the, measure, the measurement is a critical piece of performance evaluation, and there was incongruence between those two criteria. Um, as far as uh, timing of the performance evaluation, it's hard for me to just look at, at this and not look at the big picture of the organization. Uh, and so I was looking at this in a broader context. We wanted a department head evaluation. And so I was just making a recommendation to the committee that they might think about doing performance evaluations for department heads at the same time that they're involved in the budget process. And I put the explanation there for your further reference. But if the department heads are getting ready to prepare their annual budget for submission to their the budget committee as well as their committee chair, then they're going to be taking a retrospective look of what they were supposed to accomplish, what they budgeted for during that performance period, and then they're going to be reporting to the budget committee as well as their committee chair. Uh, that, it, in my mind, that's a great time to evaluate that department head's performance based on outcomes because the discussions are happening uh, at that point and it would be easier way to translate all the deliverables that have happened over the course of the performance period into a performance evaluation document. And it would also eliminate us from having to put another uh, another project into our site. You, you have any comment about that point being the point of where you want to do the review of the budget process? Yeah, I think that would be ideal, actually. Because we do already have extensive conversations with our department heads at that point. How about it in terms of having it be at a busy time of the year, uh, you'd be throwing something else onto the department heads. Is that 
It is, but it's also a natural point because, as Gretchen mentioned, uh, that is when you really are, uh, and as the budget officer knows, and also the chairman, because he was the budget officer before that, uh, we have extensive conversations with our department heads during that time period where we talk about what was it that we wanted them to try to accomplish and what do we want them to accomplish during the next year. For instance, just to give you an example, this past year when we were meeting with Pat Auer, uh, we go through these budgets uh, line by line looking at everything. And when we looked at the home care agency, we saw that there was a $300,000 loss. So we put the challenge to Pat to lower that by 50% this coming year. And well, how does she lower that? Well, we talk about that too. We talk about increasing caseloads of nurses, checking with other agencies to see if the caseloads that we carry in ours are similar to what others carry. Are they reasonable? Uh, we talk about competition. We talk about the business. So that's a really good opportunity at that point to see, you know, to not only um, set the expectations going forward in the future, but also talk about next year, of course, talk about whether she achieved it or not, because it will all be in that same mindset at budget time. So it really, uh, it does throw a little additional work on the budget process, but we're already talking about those types of things. So I think that um, that would work well. Wouldn't it make a little more sense to move it up just before the budget process so that ideally these performance work plans and these evaluations are tied into if someone deserves an additional raise. I mean, Frank and I talked at length about the fact that he's got people coming to him at budget time saying, well, this person needs a raise and that person needs a raise. Well, why? Show us that. <coughs> So before you're deciding on what their budget should be, shouldn't we have completed performance plans that tell us how our department heads and our employees are performing in Warren County? The employees and staff of the departments, yes, that should be done in advance of the budget. What I, and and the, certainly as you get the system in place, as, as Gretchen pointed out, you're going to have periodic or actually quarterly or whatever reviews that we end up determining or appropriate even with department heads. So they're not walking in blind on the day of the budget, but all the employees, the system should be in a, set up so that in advance of the budget, all the staffing, yes, that should be covered already, and those issues should be addressed. But the department heads themselves, I think the, the budget process lends a really good opportunity to have that discussion with them at that time. And as you, because keep in mind, the budget process really begins in earnest in September, the first week in September. Once the budgets are all filed by the departments, actually I shouldn't say I back it up. When I say they begin in earnest, no, they really actually begin in August. The, in August um, is when we start meeting with all the departments and going through their budgets. And then they file in September and we continue to meet with them in September. So there is, um, uh, you know, when you look at it, so much of our year is already consumed by the budget process. If you were to back up the performance of the department heads, into, I guess you'd have to back them up into May, it doesn't really work because it's too early. You really want to do that in August, September time frame. And there's plenty of time to build in uh, the money in the budget at that point. I'm not suggesting May, um, but perhaps June, July, at some point where you've got a better handle on your... For staffing, I would agree with you, but for the department heads, I think you really want to do it all hand in hand with the, you know, when we're meeting with them and talking already, because otherwise we're setting up other meetings and then it will be, uh, my time will be totally consumed from June until November. Right now it's consumed, uh, I put, I would say most of my time during budget, as Frank knows, is, and he's been through it too, is that, you know, August is a lost month, September pretty much is lost, October gets a little better because we're finally got the budget into shape, but still spending a lot of time. So you're looking at, you know, easily two, two and a half months that are just totally lost. If I'm just do uh, department head evaluations a month before that and meet again with all those people and have supervisors meeting with those people as well, we're going to lose all kinds of more time. Well, and just to kind of refresh what we discussed at the last committee meeting, and I'm not sure, I think you were here for it, when we talked about um, our chairman had said, you know, maybe it would be a good idea to have those department heads evaluated, not just by you, but by the chairman and perhaps by the chair of each Agreed. one of those committees. Agreed. So, I mean, I don't think anyone has the impression that that's all going to fall on your shoulders. No, I, I understand that, but what, it, what will happen though, because I'm in that process, it will consume my time. And as Gretchen mentioned, and I thought it was kind of interesting when I met with her because I did not, you know, point her one way or another, but she looked at the goals and she said, wow, that's an aggressive set of goals. And it's not lost on me in terms of when I look at my time through the year, even as I sat here over the holidays, <coughs> I was looking at all the things that I need to get accomplished this next year, and I realized that I lose windows of time. So that means that even in January, when it seems like I got the whole year in front of me, 
I really don't. I already know that I'm losing chunks of time, and if I don't get this, this, and this done in January, I'll never get it done the rest of the year. It makes me, you know, I get so I get very apprehensive on my own in terms of what my own expectations are of myself. And I know you guys, we've never had these conversations, so I don't think you've known that this has been things that have been going on, but that's the way I am. I start thinking day one, and usually for me, I always my, I operate on a calendar year. So when I'm closing out the old year, I'm looking at on my own what it is I didn't get done that I wanted to get done, cleaning up the things, finding to my horror that I forgot something or whatever. I'm cleaning all this stuff up, and then I'm setting my future expectations at that point going into the, the new year. So as I do that, uh, and that's why it was so easy for me to write those goals, because I already knew, because uh, my mind was already working towards what is it that we got to get done this next year to put the county in a good position. I guess what concerns me about that is Gretchen, as she mentioned, that the performance elements are not um, congruent with yours, with the goals, and that's simply because they weren't written together. You right. had one right. set of goals, and the board has one set of objectives and, and goals that they'd like to see. So I, it concerns me that they're so far apart that you're unable to find a way to measure them. And part of that, I think, is because you're not sitting in our shoes either, recognizing what measurable, like it would be easy for me to go through this and say, well, to assist the board, he's going to do X, Y, and Z. So I think maybe there needs to be a lot more communication with the board members on how to measure those goals. Kevin, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just had a question. I mean, you're moving along pretty well. I mean, you know, we started out with an administrator, now we're expanding it out. Uh, just, just how many people do you plan on doing in the calendar year 2015? Do you just plan on sticking to the administrator, or do you plan on going to the next level of, of person? Because that, that, that conversation has to be had, too. You know, because if you just if you, if you tackle too much and you fail at the first level, the whole system will fail. So I just wonder how far you're going to try to go. I mean, obviously the goal is to get Paul uh, performance evaluation done or get get the goals and get a form so he can start working towards that. And then if you want to go into the next realm, who's it going to be? I mean, how is that? we have what 200 employees that are not in the union. Obviously, the union employees we're not going to do at all. There's six, seven hundred union employees that you know they work to the contract. So, how many people are we going to try to do in this first year? And, and should we take sort of baby steps to, to choose a certain class and get it done first? I mean, I'm just obviously, you know, set on, let's get Paul done, let's get him all wrapped up and get his goals and where you all can agree in a form, and then decide if you want to go, and, okay, what's going to be the next level of performance evaluation done, and try to roll it out, because, you know, you are you are making a big change to Warren County when you start to evaluate people. And, and I somewhat agree with Gretchen that the, uh, or, or, or uh, Rachel and Gretchen, that, you know, going into the budget process, having done it like Frank, you know, department heads will come in and say, well, I want this employee to get, uh, well, this employee should get extra money. And, it, and it's, you know, we do it, we do a lot of our evaluation now based on where, where the uh, marketplace is. Maybe not what they're doing for us. There could be some, some great performer in there, but because we base it on a marketplace, we hinder them a little bit and how much, how much we can pay. Maybe, maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's not. So I just think, you know, get, get through Paul, get the form, get the goals all agreed upon, and then decide where your next level is going to be and then your next level and work through that because if you try to do too many people all at once and, and you fail, you know, it only takes one or two of the, of the, the uh, maker of the county center. If you fail and it doesn't work out, you know, you'll never get the system. I'm in absolutely agreement with you. I think that uh, when we're talking here today, we're we're kind of looking at the big picture, but we're not we're not suggesting, and I wouldn't suggest for one moment that you're going to have uh, all your employee evaluations and everything done this year. That that just won't happen. Uh, it's just don't get on track. Right. Come back. I mean, you you know, you've had one path. This is good. You know, I've, I've been through this a hundred times where I worked before, so you know, it's not Greek to me. But 
when you and the worst thing you could do is, is have have your initial thing fail because then you'll never get to where you want to be, which I believe makes us a better organization. Well, and I think though to follow up on that too is I think that we do have a format, uh, and that's what I. S started off with in the beginning of this meeting, I think there is, even though we have some problems with measurements and other things, we do have at least something to work with the first year that certainly can be refined and worked on through the first year. We have a set of goals that all the supervisors have seen for me, that everybody's in agreement on, um, that they're, and it's in sync with what your address was, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I think that we have that in place even though it's not 100% the way it should be in terms of having the organization drive everything, but we have that, and, and in some ways the supervisors are, we are doing essentially a mission vision in raw form, if you will. So we have the goals set, and while we may not have those goals 100% into a precise process, we also have, I think, some very, and we haven't gotten there yet, but we do have some valid, I think, evaluation forms that will accomplish essentially what you folks want to accomplish, which is to evaluate the, you know, my position on the success of that work. Um, so I think we can get there. I, I think the problem is going to be that ultimately the reason why you're having all the difficulties with the measurements and everything is because you don't have the whole system set up. If you look, and I have looked at some other counties where they have this all set up, they do start, as Gretchen mentioned, with the entire strategic plan and then the administ and they actually have a spreadsheet of who does exactly what because some of the administrators goals are actually delegations to the departments and follow up on my part and the only way you're going to be able to measure those is if you map all those things out and that's why I think you're having that difficulty is because we're not that um, we're not we haven't been that precise we haven't established this whole elaborate network so we need to accept that and I think if you accept that, then you can say, okay, fine, we haven't gotten there, but we're going to use roughly these goals, we're going to use some of these sheets at least to get the process going. And I think that accomplishes what I thought was the mission of this committee. We're never going to get this perfect because we haven't done the whole elaborate strategic planning system. And, you, you know, and we won't do that for a while. That's, that's a, that's a year, two-year process. So I think that we, what we're going to try to do is a couple of things. Do mine, as you suggested, get mine straightened out, and then work on the strategic plan. And then I would submit that once, actually, the strategic plan should come first, and then all this other stuff will follow. It seems to me that the goals, I don't know how you ever get to a point where they're, you know, measurable, precisely measurable. I mean, I, I look at these goals, these measurable goals, during this December 15th email, and, you know, knowing Paul and seeing how he operates, I wouldn't have any problem at all going through this, and I have my opinion, it's a subjective opinion, but I think it's pretty valid based on just seeing them operate, so I, I guess I don't the big issue with trying to get precise measurable goals. I mean, may maybe if you've gone through this process, you can do that, but I think I can right. sit here right now and, and, and do a good, fair, subjective evaluation. I, I pretty much agree with you, and yeah. one of the things that uh, back when I was involved with reviewing people often, uh, there were comments, well, hey, you know, I only got a three from my boss, you know an overall measurement of a three out of five. 
And people say, well, that's, you know, he's a tough raider, so that a three isn't There's bad. There's a subjective element, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's... Right, and I think, you know, maybe that's where I'm getting a little confused and a little frustrated with the time. I know we've already invested in, in what lays ahead of us, but that I thought the goal from the last meeting was we were going to take our, we ended up calling these performance elements in the second email, performance elements, we we're going to take your goals, we we're going to come up with a chart, form, so we had looked at several different types, to put these in and to get started and to present that to the board in February and say, listen, here's Paul's goals, they're in accordance with Kevin's mission, we have a vision for the county, we've got some performance elements, a way to capture for the first time a performance rating, meet quarterly as suggested by our chairman, do a semi-annual and annual review, and use that as a starting point to then develop our department heads and our employees that are non-union under that in the following year. Um, but I just feel like today, I, it's a lot of information, but I, I'm feeling like we were moving five steps backwards instead of one step forward. No, absolutely yeah. not. It's done. We've yeah. done it. Uh, and it? let's Where look at the, the well, let's look at the forms. The forms will self-explain themselves. Gretchen, walk them through the forms if you would, and I think that'll give you what you want because you've got the goals, and now here's the follow-up. Yeah. Where are the elements? I'm sorry. If the elements are stated on the grading forms. If you take I'm, the I'm first form, the county manager evaluation form. What she's got these labels, Gretchen, what one? A, B, C, or D. Exhibit A, right? Paul? This is Genesee yes. County. Okay. Genesee County's um, there is a, an exhibit A, which is the county manager evaluation form. Under that you'll see the exhibit B, which is the self evaluation that Gretchen referred to, which I think is important. That's done before you do yours. And um, then she's got an exhibit C. Um, the exhibit and what it was designed is each one of these forms uh, one is for me one is for the executive committee and one is for all of the supervisors to do so we get plenty of input in this process and Gretchen rather than why don't you walk them through it well uh, Paul these, these evaluation forms came from some of the things that you had gleaned I also looked at the other forms that were provided to me so I looked at all these forms and my recommendation is the evaluation form that you use to evaluate the full performance is exhibit A. And instead of doing a numerical rating system, it has exceeds meet standards or fails to meet standards. Uh, the criteria is there, one through uh, and that would be the performance evaluation document to contribute in the executive committee completing this document would be exhibit B. Paul would do this at the conclusion of, well, a little bit before the conclusion of the performance period, so he would evaluate his own performance based on the goals that have been set and expected and, and accepted by the board. So he would evaluate his own performance and give the executive committee and the, the greater board of supervisors what he's accomplished. And then exhibit C is the opportunity for everybody on the board of supervisors provide input uh, as to their, their perspective on performance. And you know, Supervisor Monroe talked about being able to provide that feedback. This is a, this is a document that does that. Uh, so it's more finite. I, I made a recommendation to cross out the five-part scale and put a three-part scale that mirrors the, the greater performance evaluation because I think that there should be congruence between the systems. And I also thought that because of the culture of this organization, we're a very we're a very verbal organization. We meet a lot, we talk a lot, we document a lot. And so I thought that you know these forms were congruent with the culture that we have cur currently. If you engage in the strategic planning process and you move forward, the culture may change. But for right now, based on what I know, uh, I thought that, that these forms, um, and these are the forms I got. This, these are not the forms that I, I So where are the five goals that we listed from our committee meeting for the last three meetings? Because that was the email we sent on to you and to Gretchen was to look at these goals, modify them, or elements in accordance with Paul's goals. So where can I find these five in these documents? 
Well, they're spread out. I mean, you, if you read um, the, the, the goals themselves, if you look through the go five goals, you'll see those, they're throughout my goals already. And if you read through these, these um, evaluation forms, they pick up in one manner or another every one of those aspects. They're just broken up a little differently, but they're there. So what the board asked as a committee to be included in the evaluation tool is not. It is. Oh, where? Well, it's in, uh, in number one in general, and what, you right. know, what, what progress have you made in accomplishing these goals? But maybe you could break it down under one, you know, one A, B, C, D, E, the five goals. And what progress have you made on each of those? Well, the, the, I guess the question is, and we had this problem the last time, is that those five goals that were written there, there's, you, 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 they're already in the goals that I gave you. So, and then these forms also incorporate it. I guess I'm losing well, what, I don't see what, you can't, the five things you can't work with them all in that context. They have to be broken out somehow so you can measure them, so you can, you can, you can pass on them. And that's what we tried to do. We took those and looked at these forms and said, look, this works. This accomplishes what you're looking for. So I guess I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. That you wanted an evaluation form, it, this gives well, it to you. We agreed at the last few meetings it wasn't about the form as much as it was about the content, but you continued to tell me that. Right. You're right. You're right. So. But this, if you look at each one, like communication is addressed in one of your uh, um, boxes there uh, in terms of communicating with the board. It's addressed here. Legislative policy and, and, and long-range goals. Why aren't I seeing something that says, you know what, Board of Supervisors Performance Evaluation Committee, you asked for number one to be incorporated. Number one is incorporated in one, three, nine, ten. Number two is incorporated in boom, boom, boom. Well, if you and want us to go back and do that, we can do that, I guess. I didn't think we needed to do that, but if you do My want only us to point do is that we were asked to sit on a committee and do a whole lot of work to get to this point, and what I see now is just a document that got thrown to the side we adopt, we're looking at a Genesee County legislature form. We're not looking at anything that's taking into account everything we've talked about up to this point, other than the goals that you've provided to us. I, well, to be very honest with you, I think that the evaluation forms that we gave you do address exactly, if you, if you took the time to read through here, I you would see they- I just got them this morning. Right, right, and I think you need time to take a look at it, but you will find they do actually address the, um, the bullet points that you have. I mean, it is all here, and I think it maybe nice we're. To have it. If you want, I, I mean, I'd be more than happy for another committee meeting to come through and actually set it forth which numbers apply to which boxes. I mean, that we can do. Let me understand first. Though. I think what you're saying, Rachel, is that when you came in here today, you expected to see a form that had these five elements on it with a rating. With his with goals, as we discussed at our last meeting as the email that was sent out requested. So I'm all for doing the work and sitting on a committee, but I'm not all for showing up, having a bunch of information given to me this morning that's completely different in, in the format idea than, than what we've all put the time into during the month of December and end of November. Well, I, I think the problem is, is that we had the last time. You can't work within the context of those forms, and that's what I suggested last time. Is that and so what I tried to do was come up with with Gretchen meeting with Gretchen and looking at everything and saying okay, let's take these elements and how can we provide a deliverable, if you will, to the group? And it I thought the objective was to get to an evaluation form that would include all of those elements that are in those boxes. And so that's what we did. I, I don't know what else to do, I guess. No, but I was also under the impression from meeting with Gretchen that in order to tie someone's performance evaluation to a raise, it needed to be on a scale system like a one through seven. <laughs> this is showing me a meets, exceeds. Well, and it, it, we had a brief discussion about that, and one of the reasons why I did this presentation <coughs> that meeting, I haven't been, I haven't been part of any of the other meetings that happened. And so if you're going to put in a performance evaluation system, that ties to a compensation system, that also <coughs> has to be part of a strategic planning process that, you know, starts with exactly what we want to measure. And so those two systems right now don't exist. But it, they, Gretchen, they do exist to some extent. The chairman had a clear vision, a clear goal in his address just a couple days ago. We do have it. But what I would have liked to have seen was a, a draft. Here's our draft based on his comments, based on your goals. This is 
we need something to work with just to accomplish this one goal, like Kevin pointed out, not to revamp it all this year, but to start with one. And I thought we were pretty close to that a month ago. I, just, I, I, I was given a bunch of uh, forms to review, and based on the forms that I have reviewed, I've made recommendations based on what I have received. And so, you know, I don't, I don't want you to believe that I've tried to do something to, to, to circumvent yeah, the process. I need to get over this. Go ahead. Problem. Yeah. Why don't, why don't uh, Rachel, you, you drop a form and then send it to your committee members and see if uh, this is a, a acceptable with, with the rating system of the three rates. With all due respect, Kevin, I've been doing that for the last six weeks. I mean, we've had these discussions. We came to the table. We did a bunch of research. We came up with these five, and I thought the next step was right, to modify I mean, them. You're looking. Is were you asking? Forgive me. I can't remember. But are you asking that Paul and, and Gretchen draw the form up, or can you guys just draw a form up? We, they were supposed to draw the form up based on the information can that we provided. Can you, can you just one of you just take the time to draw the form up and then? email it out to the committee and the two of us and say this is this is the plane we're looking at. I mean, we did. That's what's before you. I mean, I, I guess I'm totally lost. These The forms are ex exhibits A. Yes, those are the forms we're suggesting you use that will match but, but, and line but, up. Are these the five goals? These, they, they've narrowed it down to five goals? No, no, no. It, the, the, the goals are one thing. The performance evaluation performance. on the goals is a separate thing. How many performance measures did the committee come up with? Uh, the email talked about those as performance elements, so that was the language that was used. In the okay, you know, okay. Performance how many did you come up with, committee? Five. Five. Five? Then, should, then there should be five on the sheet. Well, simplistically, yeah, you're right, and that's what we were talking about before. Make it. But what, right now we've got a a different approach to addressing those five items. And what Paul is saying and what Gretchen is saying is that these forms I hear all address all of that, I okay? Hear, but I'm just saying, for the sake of the committee, let the committee draw up the form with the five goals and then present it and see if it's a usable form rather than having 12 things. 12 is a lot. One of my concerns, I think that when we get through here, we should be shoving as much of this work as possible to HR well, you will. and the administrator. And the reason being, you know, a year from now, we might not be here. So we're going to take another group of supervisors and start training them again how to do these ratings. I think that we have to set up a system that's going to be able to I think that's exactly what we did last I time. We no, I don't have all the other documents yeah. with me, but yeah. 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 I don't know. I, I just like to hear from what you know. I don't want to interject too much from anybody. Whatever you guys do. All right. Uh, the committee. What's the committee think? Is the well, it, it seems to me that there's, there's two different things. One is there's some specific measurable goals, and I think what Rachel's saying is you just want to take each one of those goals and have. Paul say, how did I do on each one of those five goals, one by one, and then there's more general than evaluation after that. If you just incorporated these five goals in, under number one, wouldn't that do it? Well, we agreed we'd do the five goals, use his or five yeah. elements, and yeah. use his goals as a supplemental document that clearly stated what the county administrator's goals mm -hmm. were for the year. The consensus of our committee was to make this as simple as possible, but yet still having a rating system that we could continue to develop throughout the year. But what I'm so our 
our commitment at the last meeting that we had all agreed on was take these five, five, let HR put them into a form that gives us some exceeds meets, fails to meet, use his 12 goals as a supplemental document, and then be able to continue to improve upon that throughout these quarterly meetings and a semi-annual review until we got the hang of it. Um, that's what I left here with. And the idea was to give it to HR to put it into that form. Well, Gretchen's here today. She wasn't here last time. Uh, do you is there? Do you think you could do something different than what we came up with at this meeting? You know, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking you guys have had hours of meetings that I have not been part of, and and so I I thought that I was doing what I was asked to do today. So can I put together a form for you to to, to bring everything together? Yes, um, I would like a. a um, I would like a specific assignment. You want me to take the five elements, and you want me to take Paul's goals, and you want me to put it into a form that I think will fit, I will do that. Well, I, I thought that was a specific assignment. However, um, I'm happy to do it as well, Gretchen, but we have an HR department. We came up with all of, all of this with a, you know multiple meetings without including the HR department. Gretchen, I asked for you to come to the last meeting. I didn't know you were sitting out in the hallway the entire time. Maybe, Paul, you were aware of that. I wasn't. I didn't know you were here. So when after we left two meetings ago, I came down and sat with you. We went through all this. I sent up an email. I said, I'm sure you'll hear from Bud, but we're meeting at such and such a date, such and such a time. You knew the meeting was going on. I'd say knock on the door and say, do you want me here? But the bottom line is, I think the goal, and maybe I'm completely wrong on the goals of the supervisor, but I think that we try to set the direction collectively on what we'd like to see happen, and we ask for it to be implemented with the guidance and the input from each department head and the county administrator. So that's exactly what we did at the last meeting. We did our homework. We came to the table with five that we all agreed on and asked for them to become part of the form and to use Paul's goals as a um, supplemental document to be able to present to the board and have it as a working document throughout the year. I, I'm confused. I guess the question is, with what we've been presented today, we want what we end up here. We want to have the right thing. Sure. We want to have a, a system that works good. What we've been presented today, and I'm just like you. I didn't see this until today. Either. I mean, that's okay. we have a rule. That's all right. One thing that Dan, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you've been uncharacteristically quiet <laughs> through this whole thing so far. <laughs> you have an opinion. I would only say that I was put on the committee, and I thank the chairman for it, but <laughs> this is all kind of foreign to me, so I can't really yeah. speak to a lot. I've never been involved in uh, a human resource department, um, evaluations. I only can speak from the heart of what I do and how I operate, and I don't know if that fits in the format of what we're trying to accomplish here. Every day I wake up, I evaluate everyone I meet, and I have opinions, and I operate accordingly with the way I was taught. I've had four uh, administrators that I've worked with. Um, I've had uh, leaders of the, of the board of supervisors. So I think history lends something to the way I view things that Rachel doesn't have just yet. It, it takes some time. And I've seen operational aspects of how we conduct business. I don't agree with it. I don't like it sometimes. But it's a culture. It's a system. And I have to function and I have to find my place in it. And I've seen evolutions of things which has brought us to the HR department. And we could back up with where we didn't even have one at one time. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm for trying to accomplish something. I've certainly learned some things through this, and I think Paul's very cooperative with it, but, you know, it's just speaking from the heart, I. I I watch everything he does, and I, you know, and I, I know you have a ton of work, and I think we're working on something that 20 guys do every day. And if he doesn't do it, it we're very vocal. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm picking up on things that were said, and he'll find out about it. And, and I think he tries to respond to, and I know what Rachel's trying to accomplish because it goes back to simplistically. There was raises asked for, there was justifications looking around, and Rachel does her homework, and it was, it's a, it was a difficult thing. We had a vote on it. I, I didn't vote for the raise for Paul, not because his, of his performance, not, not because of 
how he communicates. I, I, I voted not to give him the race because of the history of what we've been through and how we had difficulties negotiating with unions, the cuts we've made, and even though we got through that, I didn't think it was time to reward, so to speak, all the good work he's done, even though he deserved it. And I don't think that's fair to him, but in the governmental aspects, the way we operate, that's the way I felt and the way I voted. Um, and we're trying to get back to, if a raise comes again for him, does, is, he, is it justified? And I'm sitting here thinking, it, he probably would be justified with the effort he puts in, but maybe I would vote no again, just because of where we've been, what we've done, and how we've conducted ourselves. Once again, if, if he doesn't think that's fair the way I operate and doesn't like it, there's other opportunities. He certainly could go other ways and make, make a lot more money than he makes here. But he chooses to be here. I think he understands how I think. He doesn't disrespect me for it. And uh, I think we, we're on level playing fields. We, he knows I have an opinion, and, but I'm generally supportive of the work he does. So when you're trying to boil it down to something I've never been involved in, I don't think it's fair for you guys to ask for me to spout off because I'm not that educated with what we're really trying to where we're trying to end up. Because even when you end up there, I guess which is justifying raises, um, that bothers me because I might not, even though the guy's earned it, I, I might not be able to support him. I, I don't. You know. uh, unfortunately, I have to leave. I had a meeting with Lake George at 11, and I moved at 11.30 thinking that's <laughs> plenty of time, and obviously it's not. But it, but I, I think ultimately, Many of these decisions are subjective, and maybe that's not ideal. But I don't think there's any. I don't feel personally there's any way to get to a precise evaluation. So, if it meets Rachel's concerns to just try to incorporate these five measurable goals into this form, and, and that then you've dealt with some specifics, then there's more general elements of it. I think that would accomplish. I'd be happy with that. Fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been through the where I actually saw I worked for a company <clears throat> that didn't have anything and then it was bought out by a huge bank and this was 1979 so I've seen how a company that didn't have anything even that measurable <coughs> how they went through it and the first thing that this company did is they didn't set up strategic vision or back then it was called management by objective. And what they simply did is they set up systems of measurement. That's all they did. And they left it. And then after about a year, or maybe it was two years, I can't remember, they came in and they they concentrated on one thing, which was one as the what they considered the most important aspect that they wanted to see improved. They, it was very simple. It wasn't a huge change. They concentrated on one thing, and it was a way. It was by making it very simple. Everybody sort of understood it. Yeah, but they, the very first thing they did was they just simply set up measurement, and it worked. It was so smooth in terms of it was just almost like common sense to everybody. It wasn't like this big theoretical thing and people learning something new. It was just this is the way it is. That's why I said if you just concentrate on what people already know, which is measurable, which is the budget, and have, because Paul can't accomplish a billion things if other people are doing something else, I think it's going to be difficult for him. If you concentrate on one thing, which is already measurable, which is the budget, and then build on that, you'll, you'll be getting people, you can educate people on that one thing, and then, then you can spread it out to other things. Yeah. It just, you know, getting educated with this process. One, there were some very good things I thought, and Paul was apropos with, with getting in on board with also, was we, we don't look at our mission, you know, over a year period. We do budgets for a year, and I think this is a really good opportunity to start looking collectively as a group as to where we want to be and making some futuristic goals. I think I mentioned it at one of our other meetings. When I first came on, the impetus for the board was to stretch the tourism season longer. And there was a proposed convention center, which didn't pan out, but there was studies done and 
at least the exercise went through and the attempt was made. But after that, I really haven't seen any forward vision for the board. And I think something like this gives an opportunity, lends an opportunity to get us started to where we start looking of uh, where we could be if we started today um, looking at doing something to stretch those that season or, or something different. And it gives Paul that opportunity to do that. I think this format is healthy in that respect, so that's why I, I like what's going on here. And I Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I have to leave. Okay. Uh, why, don't we, why don't we do this? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'll meet as many times as is necessary to get this done. So why don't we ask Rachel if she's willing to, to put together a form that would address her issues. And then at the same time, let's take a few days and look at these things more closely and see if we see some merit in what has been presented. And come back again and, uh, you know, this, this job was pretty easy when the chairman assigned the committee and it was to establish measurement, measurable goals for the, super, for the administrator, which we've done. And now we're arguing about how we should rate these goals, okay? So let's let's try to spend a few few days at least and and ask Rachel if she would be willing to put together a form that would address her issues. Is that sound Page nine right? of my report is okay to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm happy to put the effort in, but I just want to make sure that if we do this again, that I don't ha come back to something that is totally thrown out again, in my opinion. I understand that they're in different elements of it, but if I could have the documents that were provided to us today in a word format so that it's modifiable. We don't, I don't think we have them in word, because we got them off the internet. And well, could you contact the county and ask them? Oh, well, we could probably do that, yeah. Form? I mean, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, but I, what I, but it doesn't matter what I thought. I'm happy to do what you asked me to do. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And we'll, we'll provide any, answer. you know, we'll get, we'll, I'll, I'll have uh, somebody contact the county and see if we can't get the forms for you. Thank you. And what would be a good uh, time period to meet again? Can we play that by ear when I find out when, like once I get the forms? After your board meeting. Okay. After what? On pr the 16th? Okay, any other business? Motion to adjourn? Dan, Fred? I think the other uh, great thing that comes from performance uh, is that uh, employees uh, know what's expected of them. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I've got um, so nice to know, like, if you about all the information that I can.